It's V-neck time. All right, now we got 7-5 using proportional relationships. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to learn that we can use a thing called indirect measurement. Okay, that means that it's any method that uses formulas, similar figures, figures, or proportions to measure an object. Pretty much it means we're not getting a ruler and going seven feet tall. All right, so pretty much what we're doing is the main reason we're using from this section is we're using proportions. You can use proportions to find measurements of junk that you wouldn't be able to find usually. Like I could measure if I had a time and a long enough, you know, measurement stick thing, I could figure out the height of the Eiffel Tower at a time in the day. All I'd have to do is walk out there where the Eiffel Tower is, stand in the sun, I can measure my height, my shadow, and then I can measure the shadow of the Eiffel Tower. I could measure how tall the Eiffel Tower is from that information. Okay? That's called indirect measurement because you're not directly measuring it, you're figuring it out using formulas. Okay? Let's do an example. I did it in a couple problems back, but I'll do it again. Let's say all uh, Bobby Joe is right there, stick figure. Oh, I'm Bob Joe and I got a long neck. All right, cool. Let's say he is five feet and six inches, all right, tall. That's his height. And let's say his shadow is five feet, okay? Now, let's say he's standing next to um, the world's tallest uh, lightning bolt. It's a lightning bolt that went to the ground and stayed there. And it looks really cool. It looks like it came off Harry Potter's forehead. All right, now let's say that shadow of that is 14 feet and two inches. And we want to find the measure of that incredible looking lightning bolt that stayed solid and tangible. All right, now this is what I would do, okay? First off, you've got five feet, five feet, six inches. You can't do that, okay? The inches are going to screw you up. It's mixing up measurements. Put it all in inches, okay? So five times 12, which is the amount of inches, that's 60. Right here is 60 plus 6, so 66 inches, 60 inches, 66 inches, uh, 14 times 12 is 100, 164, I believe, plus 2, which would be 166, and then that's x. Set a proportion. That over that equals that over that. So 66 over 60 equals x over 166. Match them up like that, that over that, and that over that, okay? If you keep it organized, it's pretty easy to set up the proportion. So, this part I'm not going to be able to do in my head. If you can, super duper great for you. So, 66 times 166. I'm cross multiplying. 66 times 166 is 10,956. And then 60 times x is 60x. So, I'm going to divide 60 to get x by itself. And I typed in an extra plus sign, which nobody likes. 182.6. Okay? Now, Let's say we need to put that back into feet. So we obviously divide that by 12. So it'll be 15 feet. And let's say after we did that, I cheated and told you it was 7 inches. 15 feet, 7 inches. Okay? The end. Okay, another way you could have done that, if you didn't want to go to inches, you could always just go to feet. Okay? The end. If I did that wrong, don't worry about it. All right, now, next term you need to know. See all of it. Is scale drawing. Scale drawing represents an object as smaller than or larger than its actual size. Okay? So, a scale drawing is something that it's like on a map. A map is a scale drawing. It's not actual size of Alabama when you're driving through Alabama. Alright? It's a smaller version. Okay? A scale is the ratio, okay? On that map, they'll tell you that for every inch, it's like, you know, 100 miles, okay? You're not really driving four inches and getting to Disney World, okay? You're going to have to measure up how much it is. That's set up a proportion. Uh, I will show you an example, but I feel like I've jacked up the other one. And I feel like you're just setting up a proportion. As long as you can set up the proportion correctly, you're fine. All right? All right, now, last thing you need to know is the way that areas and perimeters match up, okay, proportionally. Perimeters, you're just adding up the outsides of those things. The perimeters are gonna measure up just the same way. All right, let's say the similarity ratio of the sides of our triangle is um, three over seven, okay? That's our similarity ratio, okay? Our perimeter similarity ratio is going to be the exact same thing, okay? 
So the perimeter ratio is three to seven. All right, that's the way it's going to work for perimeter. It's going to be the exact same thing. All right. Now area is a little bit more complicated. For area, you take three over seven, you square it. All you got to do is you distribute that squared in there. Three squared is nine. Seven squared is forty-nine. That's the ratio for perimeter. So. Let me find an example for you on that one, okay? Because that can get complicated. Let's say that, say we have two triangles and their ratio is 16 over 20. Okay, first off we would reduce that to four over five. Okay, that's the ratio. Now, let's say I know the perimeter of the small triangle and the area of the small triangle. I wanna find it of the bigger triangle, okay? All right, you would set it up and set a proportion. Let's say the perimeter is 36. And let's say the area is 48, okay? Now, let me erase this so I don't get confusing. More confusing, girl. That's a word, all right? You set it up like this. Our proportion is 4 over 5. Small triangle to big triangle, okay? That's the way I'll set it up. Small goes on top, big goes on the bottom. 36 is the measurement of our small triangle, so it has to go on top. X goes on bottom. Cross multiply, 4x equals 150, that's 180. X equals 65. That has to be the, the perimeter, I'm sorry, perimeter of our new one, okay? You just set up the portion and solve it. Now, for the other one, for the area, we're gonna do the same thing, except for we have to find out how we're gonna set up this by doing the squared thing. Four over five, let's square it. Square there and there, that's 16 over 25. That's our new one, okay? We put in this old one. Area is 48 for the small triangle. X cross multiply, 16X equals, I'm gonna have to use a calculator. Uh, the 48 times 25, which is 1200, divided by 16 is 75. All right, the end. And you're done, okay? And I really feel like I messed up on that first one. If I did, let me know. You can talk to me in real life because you're probably in class. Bye. Turn off. Go, go, gadget off.